One more. And over here I took 80%. I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I can really screw up the, on some of this stuff because when I do all these little experiments, I only do an acre or two, and I can really screw up and it doesn't affect my bottom line. Whereas I did a little screw up on the whole farm, it could cost me the farm. So I try all these little things here and there to see if they're going to work before I ever use them. Okay, next one. Here's where I took the 40%, and this was three weeks later. And there's three weeks later where the 80% was. See how it died back to the ground? So if you do this and take it down to 80% in your highest growing period of your year, you really cut your production. So a rule of thumb is when the grass is growing fast, you move fast and just skim the top. And then come back when it slows down, you take it down more. Okay. Any questions? Throw up your hand. Yeah. Uh, when you're doing the all real high stock bids, a million pound per acre stock bids, in order to uh, not, uh, in order to get the, the residue you want uh, left, what kind of movement times are you having to move more than once a day? I move up to eight times a day. I've got these bat latches. I'll show you later. They do it automatically for me. Uh, nobody's going to do what I'm doing. There's maybe one or two people who do it. I don't know of anybody in the world who's moving as much as I do. But my goal in life is to have my land the same way as my grandfather, great grandfather had it when he homesteaded it. And I've not outlived all my ancestors so far, so I've got to keep working hard to get this done. Um, but Sometimes I leave a lot if there's, I don't always leave the same residue. I'm like last year, it was a guy, I left it just about no residue. That was a survival year. I got through the year. Now this year, the first time around, I took 10 to 20% of the plant. And the second time around, I'm leaving 60% of the plant behind. I'm just moving them so fast and keep them tight and they knock everything on the ground. So I'm feeding my microorganisms this year, where last year I didn't. There's no set rules. It's, there's, you keep changing every day. You monitor and change. And the more residue you can leave, you get better results. The better results. If you can leave it behind and still make a good living, yeah. The more you leave behind and the tighter the ground you pack it. Because if it's off the ground, the microorganisms can't use it. You've got to get it as tight to the ground as you can. And with more moisture, like you guys get down here, after you build your root system up to carry your, your number of pounds you need to, you get a deeper root system. It's like a good spot. It's not a big, thick bit. It will spring right back, or if you got it like that, it will poke through. So you've got to take time to do this. You can't just go stay and do a million pounds a week. You've got to work your way into it. And I'm, what I'm finding now is your land wants something different all the time. You don't want to do a million pounds or 300,000 or 50,000 year after year. We found a little nice little Chinese restaurant just down the road, just excellent food. We made it for two nights in a row, all we can eat. I don't want it tonight. <laughs> so that hamburger boy, did it taste good to <laughs> And I think the soil is the same way. You've got to keep changing things. Nature was like that. Not It didn't get the same thing year after year. So I think We've got to mimic nature as close to possible. We'll work with it. Any other? If, just throw up your hand because I can use this. Yep. Uh, you say you're moving eight times a day. At night time, do they stay on a larger paddock or do they stay on one same size paddock? Or yeah. Most people ask me what I do what I do at night. You phrase that a little different. I, I usually don't. If you ask me what I do at night, that's kind of personal. <laughs> but. No, I, I, I start with a, try to start with an acre in the morning, and I add an acre on every two hours, and then they have the whole paddock for the night. So if it does rain and pour rain, you don't end up with that little thing. Now, I used to think that was terrible, putting the land black like that. I don't anymore. It happens. You just got to adjust your rotations to next year, and you always rotate different paddocks, different times of year, so you don't stress a certain plant that's germinating or doing its thing at the same time every year, and you hit it at that time, at the most vulnerable time of the year, 
you'll kill it out. So you want to keep moving around different times. Okay? Okay? Oh, what you say? Yeah? What about shade? Shade? Yeah. That's the reason I like my bush. I got shade from them. Uh, we don't get the hot weather that you guys do down here. We get one or two days of, of uh, hot weather. I should have brought my shorts. It's hot enough down here. I need shorts to get down here. <laughs> There's another question right behind you. Is there somebody with okay. What about your water situation? Do you, have, do you pump water to them or do you just make a light? Yeah, that's, if you start doing this, the most important thing is water. What will happen to you, all your local areas will dry up on you. The places you used to have water in all the time will dry up. And because the reason for that is your land gets healthier and up high on the hill, you'll get better water infiltration. It'll soak in, it won't run off to your low spot. Like right this year, um, we had three wet months in a row, and then we had a dry one, and then we had another wet one. And the first three wet months, usually the way we used to farm, that slew, I would be hunting ducks in it now. This year, the first three wet months, there was no water in that slew. Then I grazed it off, and I moved on, and I come back in the dry month, at the end of it, and I've got water in the slew. And what's happened is, the water is infiltrated on the hills up in the highland, it goes in, and it goes underneath and starts coming up, so my water table's coming up. Eventually there will be water there, but I've got to get a better water mineral cycle. Okay? So, I found this in, um, Oh, North Dakota in one of their books after I'd done this experiment and see where my, the root growth stop at 40% you don't lose any root growth just keep clicking all the way through right to the bottom and you'll just compare all the different root stoppages like 80% uh, new usage that shuts the plant down and at 90 so at 80% and leaf removed it stops growth for 12 days so if you take it down to 80% in the best growing time of the year and you shut down for 12 days, you've lost a lot of production. And the same thing with 90, you go 18 days. Okay? Uh, have any of you ever heard of bale grazing down here? Okay, one or two. Okay, this is where uh, you put bales out. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, and you don't haul the bales over, okay, just keep clicking. Okay, this here, um, you see you got them in rows. Now this here, I use plastic twine, and I shouldn't have. I went to Agribition in the wintertime, and it was gone out when I left. That's a show like your Denver, it's a stock show in the wintertime. And I came home and it had rained, so I spent all winter pulling strings off these things. Uh, I say I haven't made a mistake since I started this. If you didn't do something more than once and expect a different result, it doesn't work. So I've got a lot of learning experiences. I you can call them a learning experience if you only do it once. So I've got a lot of learning experiences. So this was a learning experience. Now I use sisal twine or get the strings pulled before winter sets in. Okay? Here was another learning experience, okay? This here, I put the bales 20 feet apart. I dropped the one with the front end loader and the other with the three point hitch at the back, going down this way. And this here is too wide. And this bale here, I put them all this way now instead of this way. What happens here is, all the manure is in this area, but there's none out here. I've fertilized this really good in here, and nothing out here. So next year when I come back to graze it, this here will be ready to graze, and this isn't. So I want my whole paddock at the same stage when I start grazing it. So I will put them close together. All my experts tell me I'm overloading them with fertilizer and all that. But what's happening, they don't look at the whole picture. 
when you tramp all that in the snow and stuff, and it still froze too much after all the ground around it, you don't get any runoff. It releases slow into the soil. And underneath here, you'll have, in a year or so, you're just going to have a tremendous amount of root, roots. So you got to look at the whole picture. They like taking one thing and jumping on the bandwagon and saying that's it, it. But you got to look at the whole picture. Okay? Are you oh, yeah. those uh, roads? Oh, in? yeah, okay. Okay, what I do back here, back, I used to put a post here and run it down there. And the same thing here, I'd run a wire there. Well, that meant I had to carry steel sucker rods that drive in the ground in the wintertime. And I'm not lazy, I just like doing things a little easier. So, next picture. I'll show you what I do now next time. Here's what I do now. I use these fiberglass rods with a pigtail thing on the end, or you can use just a, a screw-on insulator on this plastic uh, fiberglass rod that's about six or eight feet long. And I use the next row of bales for my fence to hold my fence up. And you always, if you've got cows and calves together, you always put this up high enough so the calves can go underneath it. And they'll go ahead about two bales and pick out all your best bales. It's just like a creek feeder for them. And then you'll have, you'll be feeding one row here. You have this wire here and you'll have another wire in the next row. So if this wire does break, they don't go through all your bales. Uh, this is airplane cable down here. Okay, next one. Okay, for feeding 60 cows for 110 days. It took me six hours track to work to set the bales out. And to pull strings, that's three hours. And if you slice the twine, you don't have to worry about it. And if you do this, don't harrow it. It's gonna look like a mess, but there actually there's not much left behind. The better the quality of the bales, the better they'll clean it up. And after a few years, the cows get on to clean it up good anyway. And if you happen to get a big snowfall before they clean it all up, Wait till uh, later on and bring them in later on, and they'll clean it up later towards spring. Uh, if you've noticed the uh, pastures where all these deep uh, spots are in your field that are real lush green, that's where they've urinated, and the urine goes in the ground in our area with the, with the 12 to 13 inches, and it comes back out for 60 days. So if you wait for 60 days, your ammonia smell is gone, and they'll clean up that grass, green grass, or this, the litter from behind the bales, so if you want to make, but it's not waste, it's, it's your fertilizer program, is what it is. I don't buy any fertilizer. I tried to get, uh, the one guy saw this, he wanted, he worked for the university, he wanted me to take it to the professors and get this study and see what, they figured they should be teaching some of this in the university, and I showed up my pictures, there are lots of questions, really interested. And one of the professors asked me how much fertilizer and sprays I use. And I said none. And you may as well told them I had DSE because they were out of the room. And but somebody said, well, who's going to pay for this? And the next, it was me and the projector man left to put the pictures. They weren't the least bit interested. Okay. Just keep filing through here for a bit. See the litter? Okay, see there? There, now you don't want to harrow that up. It doesn't look good. But if you hear it, it's already got good ground contact, so everything in the microorganisms to break it down. You hair it up, you fluff it, you lose all your nutrients into the air. Okay? Just keep going through. There's these are this is where straw was. There's more behind straw. Okay, just keep pushing. See a row there, a row there, there, a row there, and there. And next one, see that bush there? That was in the winter, and here's what it looked like next year when I was going to turn them in. There was no seed put down here at all. This is all just seed from the bale. The seed would have been in the ground forever. And, okay, well, just back up. Now, this is the field that I finally tumbled on high stock density. Because by keeping records, I, this paddock here was about 30, 40 acres, and in behind this bush was six acres. And we did the bale grazing on both. And the next year I came in with either three or four hundred head of yearlings, and I got double the carrying capacity back there as I did here. And if you come today, you'll still see, this is 10, 15 years later, you'll still see 
how much better the grass is behind the bush for the 